So the conical pendulum, uh, there's a video of that that you should have been able to see. But in that video, what I have is I have uh, some mass that's hanging from a string and I'm able to kind of make it go in a horizontal circle and watch the video. <laughs> and so this question is relating to that. So for the conical pendulum, um, as, uh, it, uh, um, as it's undergoing the circular motion, the string is making angle theta and these diagrams show the path that the ball is following. You kind of, with a lot of circular motion problems, you need more than one view to fully describe it. So the side view shows that, oh, it's a horizontal circle. And the top view shows that, oh, it is a circle, not a back and forth motion. Um, so, all right. So the question says, draw a free body diagram for the ball, uh, of the ball for the side view at time t naught. So the question kind of uh, fixes me at this snapshot. And I guess I could draw free body diagram on this diagram, but uh, I prefer to draw free body diagram separately. It, uh, because it's your, uh, it's, your, it's your analytical tool. You're going to be making a lot of notations and other things. It really works out nicely when you have a nice big diagram where you can apply the standard strategy. So um, this dot represents my ball of mass M. Uh, thinking at this for a bit, um, there should be only two forces on this ball, gravity and tension. There's nothing else that can be applying any kind of force on this ball. So let me write those in. There's gravitational force, mg and there's tension force going off at an angle. And I might do a little bit of a geometry to figure out uh, that angle theta. It's a, this angle theta here. So, all right. Then the, as, as you're drawing the free body diagram, um, you should always be asking this question of yourself. Does this uh, look complete? And because, especially because this particular diagram represents a net force, which is pointed this way, which means you have acceleration pointed that way. And as you think about it, or after you have thought about it, your answer should be yes. It looks complete. You should have this acceleration. That is the centripetal acceleration. That is the acceleration that points to the center of the circle. And you know, and when the ball is over here, it'll be pointing this way. But yeah, you need you have the centripetal acceleration, and that's the thing that makes uh, a lot of circular motion problems tricky because it's easy to forget that the ball is accelerating when it's moving in a circle. So, so all right. So that's my free body diagram. Uh, part B says, given the angle theta, the swing makes the vertical find the speed of the ball and the radius of the circular path. Um, so this is where I had to finish the rest of the standard strategy. Uh, let me just write out the steps for the standard strategy as a reminder. Uh, I guess I don't know if you want to write out this is scratch work on the exam. There's going to be enough space. Step one, which I just did, is draw a full body diagram. I just did that, so I don't need to do it again. Step number two, is a defined coordinate axis. So I need to do that. And I'm just gonna use the, uh, the diagram that I already drew to uh, make all these notations. That's why I drew these arrows nice and big so that it's easy for me to make those notations. So um, I identify the direction of acceleration. So that's going to be my X axis direction. Um, I'm doing this in a different color so that I don't, conf <laughs> well, I say I'm doing, uh, let me do it with a dotted line. <laughs> so the color is not the only thing distinguishing that. As you are making notations on your free body diagram, one thing you do want, need to be careful with is that whatever additional things you're drawing are not confused with the force. Um, and uh, it, this looks like a two dimensional problem. So let me make sure that I label this as my Y axis. So, okay, I've done that. I defined my axis with one of the axes pointing along the direction of acceleration. And third step is break forces into components. 
So when you look at the gravitational force, that's already along the direction of a y-axis. So I don't need to break it down. It's the tension that needs to be broken down into components, into y component of tension and the x component of tension. And so this is the right angle. And I already identified this angle here. So, um, so this is the adjacent side. So this should be T cosine theta. And this is the opposite side to the angle. So this should be T sine theta. All right, um, so with all that done, the only remaining step is writing the Newton's second law equations. So here, I'm going to be writing down two equations, one for the x direction, one for the y direction. So uh, let me do, write that down for part B. So um, steps one through three, all those take place on the free body diagram. Once again, that's why I draw a nice big free body diagram. So I have enough uh, space to do these things without getting things confused with other things. Okay, so uh, my net force equation, net force along the x-axis, um, only the x component of tension is in that direction. So let me write that down as T sine theta. This is why I draw the triangles. <laughs> um, is equal to mass times acceleration. And here I might just go one more step because I happen to know this is a centripetal acceleration. So it should be equal to V squared over R, where the V is the tangential speed and R is the radius of the circle. All right, um, let's keep going. So net force in the Y direction is equal to, I now have two forces, um, T cosine theta minus mg, oh wait, this should be in capital. Um, Yeah. Um, that's equal to, the ball is not accelerating in the vertical direction. So that should add up to zero. Um, so that's my two Newton's second law equations. And this uh, completes the standard strategy. And as you, um, as, so in the previous exam once, sometimes after you're done with the standard strategy, it was just one step away from uh, solving the uh, problem. Uh, but now that we are more sophisticated, our questions are more interesting, you might find that um, when you're done here, you still have quite a few number of steps. So watch out for that and be ready to continue analyzing the question and um, not say that you're done after writing down Newton's second law equations. So, um, so yeah, this is what I have. I have an equation for tension, uh, which I guess I can just solve it for tension. It's one equation with one unknown. So solving it for tension, I get big mg divided by cosine theta. All right, um, I can plug that in into the first equation so that I don't have to deal with an unknown that the question's not asking about and I don't want to deal with. So plugging that in, I get mg sine theta over cosine theta, or so it's so that it's not cumbersome, let me just rewrite that as tangent theta, because that's what it is. Tangent theta is equal to mv squared over r. All right. Um, so the question was asking, find the speed of the ball and the radius of the circular path. Hmm. Okay, we are going somewhere because two of the quantities are the, those two quantities being asked, V and R. And uh, I can cancel out and masses cancel out. Um, now the problem here is um, I only have one equation and I have two unknowns. Whenever you see that, whenever you see more unknowns than your equations, that should be a hint to you that you need more information. You have some additional information you need to write down. And that additional information is, will 
almost always, or um, it can always be written down in the form of an equation. Um, so, so here, let me try to do that. So um, here, the I guess that this is a kind of, this is the difficult part to try to explain the motivation for, because it, there's an, almost an intuitive leap that you have to make. Um, I guess uh, some of my thought process would go this way. I am looking at this VNR and I would look at, is there a way I can relate VNR? One of the ways I can relate VNR is um, uh, through kinematics because this is a speed, um, and uh, this is uh, uh, this is relates to distance. So if I'm looking back at this uh, here, um, this would be R, and V is the speed at which this ball is moving. So I can kind of look at. All right. So the way to relate speed to uh, distance is to say that this is speed is a distance over time. So I could say um, speed V is uh, equal to the distance would be uh, the circumference 2 pi R divided by period. Hmm. But then period is another thing that I don't know. Um, Maybe there's, so, so this seems like a dead end to me because in order to relate VN, VNR, I wrote down another equation, but then that ended up introducing another unknown. So <laughs> I haven't moved forward at all. So, all right, sometimes some methods you try will uh, reach a dead end. So it's a kind of a trial and error thing. So once you recognize that, um, then all right, done with that particular branch. Let's keep thinking. So if relating V and R together didn't work, then is there another way to get at these expressions for V and R? V, I feel like it's harder to get it because um, it's a dynamical quantity. Um, so, uh, so, well, so let me try R. And looking at that above there, I realized that when I marked that R, you can mark that R in the side view. And if you do, this will be your R. And that R is part of this right triangle. And okay, I'm getting some error here. The length of the string was given L. So R can be expressed in terms of L and theta. It's equal to L sine theta. So, all right, uh, so let me plug that in. I think that'll get me where I want to go. So plug that in here. I get G tangent theta is equal to V squared over L sine theta. So I can, uh, so I then uh, this is already expression in terms of L and theta for R. And I can solve this for V. When I do that, I get V is equal to square root of um, L times G times sine theta times tangent theta. Um, and this is an expression for V in terms of just the given quantities, L, G, and theta. M canceled out, so I didn't need it. All right, good. Let's keep going. <laughs> so, Oh, uh, yeah. So once you have this expression, then uh, in part to see, it's just asking you to basically plug in the numbers. Um, it's asking for what is the angle theta that the string makes with the vertical. Um, yeah, I guess you can just plug in the numbers into V. And um, I mean, you. The, the one challenging thing is, let me write it here. Uh, v is equal to square root of LG sine theta and tangent theta. This is something that you will face from time to time with these trigonometric expressions that this equation, um, once now it's asking for the angle theta, 
It does have only one unknown, but then it has these two expressions. So you might find it useful to kind of rewrite it in terms of their basic um, trick expressions. So then tangent theta is a sine over cosine, so it's LG sine squared theta over cosine theta. Then, oh, then you can rewrite this sine squared theta as one minus cosine squared theta. And then uh, I think you, then you can finish this uh, solving it for cosine theta. And once you solve it for cosine theta, then you can get to theta using arc cosine. So um, there's quite a bit of math involved here. So, so uh, let me do that math. So let's see. Um, so the challenge here is that you have this rather complicated looking expression. And it would be nice if they're asking for something like L or, you know, something easy. They're asking for theta. And the theta is inside, uh, trig fun inside two different trig functions. And the... One of the kind of approach that works a lot of the time is to first reduce your trig functions into a single trig function. So, you know, here I have sine and tangent. All right, I don't like that. So I can rewrite tangent as sine over cosine to make sine squared theta over cosine theta. It's still not enough because I still have two trig functions that all go to the single uh, parameter that I'm looking for. So what I need to do is exactly what's here, um, what I said way before, uh, substituting one minus cosine squared theta for sine squared theta. That comes from the, the Pythagorean theorem or one of the trig identities, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to one. So solve that for sine squared theta, that's what that is. Plug that in, then you get square root of LG times one minus cosine squared theta over cosine theta. And here, what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to treat cosine theta like that's my variable. So I'm first going to solve for cosine theta. And after I've done that, then I can, um, I can apply arc cosine after double checking some of the conditions that I always check. So, all right, so trying to solve for cosine squared theta, or cosine theta, uh, I guess I got a square both sides. And after squaring both sides, I think I'm going to multiply both sides by uh, cosine theta over LG. Because that'll kind of help me separate things out and see where to go from there. So let me do that. I'm gonna write down the version of the equation where I've done that. So I have, uh, on the left-hand side, I have V squared, that's that side of squared, times what I'm multiplying through. Cosine theta over LG is equal to, right-hand side, squaring, got rid of the square root, multiplying this, uh, got rid of these terms, and gave me one minus cosine squared theta. Oh, yeah. I'm going to have to use, uh, <laughs> um, use the, the quadratic formula. Or let me use this chance to use sage math. I mean, I can use quadratic formula. Uh, if you have any doubt that I know how to use quadratic formula, ask me in person. I'll demonstrate anytime, even while I'm sleeping. But I think, you know, in case uh, things like quadratic formula is what's uh, preventing you from succeeding in this class, this is not a math class, it's a physics class. And what I want you to learn is how to do the physics portion of it. Math portion, if you need to, to use computer algebra system to get you through it, that's perfectly fine. That's what a lot of engineers and scientists do in their real work anyway. So, um, so once this finishes initializing, I'm going to type in the equation and have sage math do the, do the, the do the algebra for me. I'm gonna give it, uh, specify the equation a little bit carefully because computer algebra systems tend to struggle with the uh, trig functions. <laughs> so this is how I'm gonna specify. I'm gonna use variable b for speed, l, g. And instead of telling it I have uh, theta as one of the parameters, I'm going to use capital X. That's going to be what my cosine theta will be. 
So I need to specify my equation. The form I have so far is v squared times x divided by l times g is equal to 1 minus x squared. So that's my equation. So Sage Math has something called a solve. I think I've shown this uh, documentation before. And um, oh, wait. <laughs> the calling of documentation does another initialization thing. <laughs> OK, um, so you can look at the documentation if you are not familiar how to use it. I'm just going to do solve, uh, so, solve um, the equation that I defined uh, in terms of x. And I think that that's it. Um, yeah, it will give me two solutions and I have to think it through and judge uh, which is the correct one. Um, yeah, so it gives me two solutions, this one and this one. Let me just uh, put them into uh, uh, variables and so, so, uh, yeah. so uh, solution one is uh, so, uh, the first uh, thing. Solution two is the solution, the second thing. And I think it's going to be the easiest to talk through which one of these should be the one we are expecting after plugging in the numbers. So let me plug in the numbers. Solution one, so let me substitute in L is equal to one meter, uh, V is equal to one meter per second, um, and G. Uh, I'll use the value that the question tells me to use. Oh, sorry, I did say some mistake. Uh, <laughs> forgetting my Python syntax. Um, I think that's all the parameters. So, uh, let's see. Let me force it to the decimal approximation. Okay, uh, so the first solution is a negative value. Let's look at the sol second solution. Uh, okay, second solution is positive value. And Oh, this is actually nonsensical. So because my x is supposed to be cosine of theta. Now, cosine of theta can be negative, but it can't be negative value that has greater magnitude than 1, unless your theta is complex or imaginary. So OK, that makes our decision easier. We are going with this. So our answer for theta will be arc cosine, oh, I hope that's a function here, arc cosine of 0 0.951249. I'm just trying to avoid rounding errors. So that's uh, the answer in radians. So if I want answer in degrees, that'll be that times uh, 180 divided by uh, numerical value of pi. Okay, so 17.96 degrees. That's the answer. <laughs> All right, uh, for posterity sake, let me, do I want to, uh, I'll remember how to do computer algebra system thing later, or okay, okay, I think in case I need to remember what I did or show people what I did outside of the video screenshot, let me just pay this, paste this one through here, okay, and then keep going. Okay, so that's the answer <laughs> for C. Uh, answer for D. Uh, suppose that you start moving the ball faster so that the angle the string makes with the vertical becomes three times the value found in C. What is the speed of the ball now? Okay, I think uh, the good starting place is this one. Um, the analytical expression for V that we had earlier. It, that saves uh, having to redo the bunch of work that we've already done in parts A and B. So uh, in part C, we were treating the theta as unknown. In this part, I guess we are treating the theta as the known. <laughs> so, okay, here we are treating theta as known. It, what the question wording here is saying is that the theta is now given to be three times the value up there, 17.96 degree. It's asking, what is the speed of the ball now? Oh, it's just a number plugging in exercise. I have this, I have this, I have these. So just to plug the numbers in and get your V. So let me actually just to use a sage math for that. I have almost everything in there already. So my theta will be um, not the previous input, but the 
previous previous input because I this is already in radians, so I don't have to convert anything. So I'm gonna take that and multiply by three. That's going to buy, be my new theta. And let's just calculate what they have there. Square root of, oh, could I put it to the end? Or I think it will be fine. Square root of L, so that's uh, one meter times G, 10 meter per second squared times sine of the angle times tangent of the angle. Yep, 3.33 uh, 3 meter per second. So new speed is 3.33 meter per second. I thought there was something I wanted to demonstrate with it. Um, <laughs> I think what I wanted to demonstrate was, it was the relationship wasn't linear. Because, <laughs> um, you know, theta went up by a factor of three and V went up by a factor that's greater than three. And I think is if you use um, some, if I make theta, one second, uh, so pi over two. I just want to make sure I don't go too high. So I can't quite double theta, but, but let's say I make a theta um, uh, 1.5 times uh, as much as what it is now. Um, then when I do this calculation again, it won't be 1.5 times as much as that, yeah. It's like more than double what it was before. It's, you know, the relationship isn't linear. That's really what it comes down to. But I think for the, at the limit of small theta, it is remarkably linear. No. <laughs> there was a bigger point there that I don't think there's time to get into. So, so that's a, this question. Um,